next guest tonight just won his seventh Sprint Cup championship, making him tied for the most championships in NASCAR history. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the 2016 NASCAR Sprint Cup Series champion, Jimmy Johnson. <laughs> Can I take? Can we take a look at that thing right there? Yeah, it's not the lightest thing. That is, oh my lord, that is. This would make a great murder weapon. <laughs> no one would ever suspect, but it's got a lot of sharp edges, <laughs> or a great thing to hold your nachos in. Congratulations! Correct. Thank you. Wow. Okay. Now, uh, I guess you could put it over there because I can't see. Can't see me. <laughs> all right. It'd be like giving there a confession. Go. Um. All right, congratulations. I got, I got the, the moment where you're, uh, you, you finish the line, you're celebrating with your friends. Okay, that is. That, that, photo that is, is the most. Did that hurt? At this point in time, if you zoom in, I, I, the pain hasn't hit me yet. I'm still smiling and screaming, and in the next frame, I'm just in utter misery. What gets me is I think there's more Gatorade here than could possibly fit in this tub. <laughs> is the back of this tub like connected to Narnia or something? <laughs> well, congratulations. You join you. Richard Petty and Dale Earnhardt yes. as the Seven Timers Club. What, what does that mean to you? Um, it is, it's just a wild experience. I mean, it means so much to me to be able to, to tie those great icons of our sport. Um, they've done so much for our sport, and I still have a lot of years left to drive, and so hopefully I can, I can create my own legacy and leave my own mark in the sport and help grow it to the next level as they both did. So you, you've got a lot of years left in the sport. You're 41 right yes, now. Yes, sir. Got a little, a little bit of snow there on yes, the chin. Yes, it's coming in slowly. Uh, Tony Stewart, Tony Stewart's, it was his last race. It was. And he's 45. 45. How, how long can you drive? What's the career like? Because in some sports, you're done by 41. Right. What, what, what's like the top range generally for I would say do? Mark Martin was probably the one that went the deepest in recent history at 52, 54, maybe mm -hmm. somewhere in there. Yeah. Um, I don't want to go that long, but I, I've got at least another five in me. <laughs> I can get to 45, I think. Um, I, have, I have sat in uh, a NASCAR car, but I've never, the wheels have never even rolled one full revolution with me in it. <laughs> you Is need there, to change that. I know, it'd be nice. Um, I'm, uh, the doctors say I've got a condition called uh, uh, a coward. And <laughs> Clinical term. But uh, I've ridden with the Thunderbirds, but I'm afraid to get in a NASCAR. Is there anything that you... See, I haven't been in the Thunderbirds. They really? They invited me. I won't Don't go. do it. That's Don't what I've heard it. from everybody. I'm like, Is there okay. anything you could compare it to? I mean, we were all kids once and had our license and stood on the gas, right? And raced sure. around. So, I mean, it's, it's in that same vein. I mean, that's where I started. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> Grant, granted, now it's a lot safer than what I was doing on the streets and stuff as a kid. Uh, you're on a track and you have walls and everybody's going the same direction. There's an ambulance close by. It's that's pretty nice. tame. That's I mean, nice. Honestly. Now, um, Carl Edwards uh, was in the lead. It was his race to lose before he crashed with, uh, what, 10, 10 laps to go? go? Something, something like that. that. Okay. So, what is, it, what is it like when you're in a crash? Is it like being in an industrial dryer with some like fluorescent bulbs thrown in with you? <laughs> is that, is, do, do you have a sense of, are you oriented at all when that's happening? Yeah, absolutely. As, as the crash starts, you know where you're going, um, either on the brakes, some cases you need to be on the gas to try to spin out of the way, working the steering wheel, just trying to limit the impact and what's going on. Um, for us, the good thing is there's a lot of noise in, in crashing and banging that goes on. But when you really hit hard, you just take a little nap and you wake up and you're okay. That's nice. Just take a little siesta and exactly. climb in the ambulance. Yeah, and it's you all, can't it's be too over. upset. You want to make it to 52. Exactly. Right. That's it. You, you also, I mean, you're a you're a athlete with the car, but you're also an athlete with your foot. You do triathlons. I do. Do they make driving a car seem easy after you do a triathlon? Man, the pain on a, in a triathlon versus the pain in the car, yeah, it makes driving a race car much easier. Do you have to be in shape to drive a race car? Absolutely. So how does it help? Doesn't the car provide the muscle? True, true. But I mean, it's 120 degrees inside that car, regardless of the outside temperature. So you do a lot forces. of hot yoga to get ready you know, for that. No, that's one thing I don't do. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, I can't sit still, so yoga's not my thing. But um, being on the bike, running, swimming, all of that kind of plays a key role in, in keeping the, the fitness up. And also, it helps a lot with my nutrition and hydration. I'm very dehydrated right now. 
because of the race and the celebrating last night, so I need to get back on that program. Well, the, but, race, the, the race you and I raced at the top of the show, too, correct. obviously. I, I yeah. cramped a little bit. I'm sorry. You I was did cramp slow. a little bit right there. Yeah, I saw the hand touch the, the grapefruit a little bit there. I'm sorry, what? <laughs> I saw your hand touch the grapefruit a little bit there. I'm not going to ask for an instant replay because you're the champ, <laughs> but hand touched the grapefruit a little bit there. Um, also touched the orange. Um, <laughs> We're going to stop there with the fruit? There's yeah. one more left. Well, when... <laughs> what do you... Okay, so now, now you're one of the all-time greats of your sport. What do you think makes you great? What do you think your difference is? You know, I, I was asked this earlier, and I've thought long and hard about it. And, and really, the, the premise of... The, the basis of being a top, top NASCAR driver is being good at complaining. What do you, how does complain? All I though? do is complain about what my car won't do, and it's, can somebody fix it? It's, it's all we do as drivers. You come in, you just come into the pit and say, "Hey, man, this thing won't go faster." I, I don't even have to wait that long. I can sit in the car, push the button, and talk to the crew and yell at them and tell them how bad the car is, and hope that they can dream up something to fix it. That's the greatest job in the world. Well, when you're when you're doing uh, like 180 miles an hour, it, it, but if you're out in front and you know that you've got the rest of the field dusted, even at 180 miles an hour, does your mind ever start to wander like, I gotta pick up some eggs and I gotta pick up some bread? <laughs> Do you ever start to, like, you know, start whistling a Taylor Swift song or something like that? <laughs> the Taylor Swift song's been stuck in my head. I'm a six-year-old. I've oh, even been okay. to her concert, so yes. You have? Good. Yes. Does she know? Who, Taylor? Taylor? Does she know? Because you should be in the squad. In the, what's the squad? What's the squad? Yeah. You should be in the girl squad. That doesn't sound good. I don't know about this. <laughs> My daughter can be. <laughs> okay, all right. We'll work it out. I think she'd like to have you up there. Well, Jimmy, it was Thank lovely so to meet much, you. Bro. Thank you so much again. You. Good to have you back. The 2016 NASCAR Sprint Cup Series champion, seven-timer, Jimmy Johnson. We'll be right back.